Welcome to Understanding the 2023 NFPA 70B Standard for Electrical Equipment Maintenance. This presentation provides a practical guide to understanding and complying with the 2023 NFPA 70B requirements, including what is new in the standard, compliance requirements, maintenance implications to common electrical system components, strategies that simplify electrical maintenance program. In 2023, the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA 70B, has shifted from a recommended practice to a standard containing mandatory language for the development, implementation, and operation of an electrical maintenance program, EMP. It is believed that this change will provide practical safeguards, helping protect people and support more reliable electrical systems. It closely aligns with NFPA 70E, Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace which indicates that even if equipment is installed properly, it may not be safe to work on unless it is properly maintained per the manufacturer's instructions or industry consensus standards. The new standard will impact electrical infrastructure installed in industrial plants, institutional and commercial buildings, and large multifamily residential complexes. Unlike the state-adopted NFPA 70, National Electric Code, NFPA 70B is not a code or directly mandated by law. However, much like NFPA 70E, NFPA 70B is considered the minimum consensus requirements for safe electrical work practices and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration can utilize the standard to issue citations. For decades, the 70BE recommended practice for electrical equipment maintenance serve to provide guidance to electrical maintenance managers on how to develop and implement an electrical maintenance program, EMP. It provided a framework to safeguard people, equipment, and processes from electrical system failures. The 2023 version of 70BE, now a standard, shifts from recommendations to mandatory language surrounding the implementation of electrical maintenance programs. Earlier versions of 70B provide for what electrical maintenance practices should be whereas the new version provides for what they shall be. Changes were made to incorporate the electrical equipment physical condition, criticality, and operating environment when determining the frequency of maintenance. The failure of improperly maintained equipment could impact personnel or environmental safety. Let's focus on five requirements you need to know. First, Chapter 9 of 70B now provides mandatory scopes of work and maintenance intervals broken out by product type and based on an equipment condition assessment. These requirements can be referenced in Table 9.2.2, which is in alphabetical order and provides the corresponding reference chapter for maintenance procedures specifics. It is important to note these maintenance intervals do not supersede manufacturer's guidelines. They provide guidance only in the absence of information from the manufacturer. Second, equipment condition assessment is key. Chapter 9 prescribes maintenance intervals based on an equipment condition assessment, which depends on the following conditions. 1. Equipment physical condition. 2. Criticality. 3. Operating environment. The equipment condition assessment, ECA, is driven by the highest value of these three conditions. For example, if equipment is designated condition 1 for electrical equipment and criticality, but a condition 3 for operating environment, then the equipment would use condition 3 durations for the ECA maintenance intervals. 70B also requires a decal system at the conclusion of maintenance to provide a visual indication for electrical workers of the electrical equipment condition of maintenance. Third. Electrical maintenance programs are now defined. 70B 4.2 provides clearly defined requirements for what elements an electrical maintenance program shall include. An electrical safety program that addresses the condition of maintenance. Identification of personnel responsible for implementing each element of the program. Survey and analysis of electrical equipment and systems to determine maintenance requirements and priorities developed and documented maintenance procedures for equipment, a plan of inspections, servicing, and suitable tests, a maintenance, equipment, and personnel documentation and records retention policy, a process to prescribe, implement, and document corrective measures based on collected data, 
a process for incorporating design for maintainability in electrical installations. A program review and revision process that considers failures and findings for continuous improvement. Fourth, field testing and test methods. The 2023 update to 70B now provides detailed prescriptive scopes for preventive maintenance in Chapter 8, field testing and test methods. Compared to previous versions of 70B, the update clearly defines testing category types in Section 8.3. 1. Online Standard Test Performed while the electrical equipment or device is connected to the source of supply. 1A. Online Enhanced Test Not typically performed in normal electrical maintenance activities and provides additional diagnostic information. 2. Offline Standard Test Performed while the electrical equipment or device is disconnected from the source of supply or is connected to an external test voltage source of supply. 2A. Offline Enhanced Test Typically not required testing that may be useful based on the application of the equipment or if there is a problem with the equipment. For example, a rated hold-in test in accordance with NEMA. A B-4 might be performed on a molded case circuit breaker if the circuit breaker has been tripping under normal load conditions. It is important to note that 70B provides the minimum requirements for preventive maintenance, which are superseded by manufacturer guidelines. For instance, 70B states that testing trip functions is optional for circuit breakers 250 amps or less, and circuit breakers with electronic trip units only require verification of the calibration of all the functions of the trip unit by means of the manufacturer's specified test sets. Fifth, system study intervals are now defined. In alignment with the National Electric Code and the NFPA 70E, the 2023-70B Chapter 6 provides detailed requirements for system studies, including up-to-date single-line diagrams and short-circuit studies. Mandatory intervals for studies shall not exceed five years, including Section 6.3, Short-Circuit Studies. Section 6.4, Coordination Studies, Section 6.7, Incident Energy Analyses. It is important to note that when each of these system studies are performed, the electrical system, including overcurrent protective devices and equipment ratings, may need to also be reviewed, verified, and potentially modified to align with the scope of the standard. Additionally, electricians and design professionals rely on accurate single-line diagrams to calculate the short circuit values and protective device clearing time that ultimately determine incident energy and or personal protective equipment. So, if you or the utility feeding your electrical infrastructure make electrical infrastructure changes, it is important to make sure drawings and studies are updated. For instance, if your utility installs new transformers feeding your facility, these devices will need to be incorporated into new system studies to properly apply the protective settings that help safeguard personnel and equipment. Applying the 2023-70B to electrical system equipment. Periodic Maintenance Procedures. NFPA 70B Equipment Chapters 11 through 38 provide guidance on the periodic maintenance procedures for all equipment categories listed in Chapter 9. These include Visual inspections, lubrication when applicable, electrical tests, cleaning, mechanical servicing. Protective devices, such as circuit breakers and protective relays, are an important use case to understand this process. Their performance is dependent on proper maintenance and incident energy calculations are invalid per NFPA 70E if they are not properly maintained. NFPA 70B shows the visual inspection requirements for molded case circuit breakers, insulated case circuit breakers, low voltage power circuit breakers, and medium voltage power circuit breakers. To maintain these devices in accordance with 70B, you shall perform visual inspection in accordance with Table 15.3.1, which includes a step by step guide that includes verifying ratings, inspecting insulation materials, and operating mechanisms, and checking the overall condition of the device. Clean and lubricate, when applicable, the circuit breaker and its components, 
Following instructions in tables 15.3.2.2 and 15.3.3. Perform the mechanical service requirements outlined in Table 15.3.4, which include checking all accessible electrical hardware connections for proper torque, operating the circuit breaker in a test fashion three times, and verifying operation and alignment of mechanical safety interlocks. Carry out electrical testing as prescribed in Table 15.3.5, which details testing requirements for different types of circuit breakers and includes guidelines for infrared thermography, insulation resistance testing, inverse time trip testing, instantaneous overcurrent trip testing, testing arc reduction technology in accordance with manufacturer instructions. Similarly, the periodic maintenance procedures for protective relays are outlined in Chapter 35. These include performing visual inspections per the checklist in Table 35.3.1 that includes verifying case condition and seal, proper operation of visual displays, integrity of wiring and connections, and verification that settings match the coordination study. The protective relay should then be cleaned and mechanically serviced following instructions in Tables 35.3.2 and 35.3.4, respectively. Then, you shall perform the electrical testing requirements outlined in Table 35.3.5, which includes the following tests depending upon the type of relay technology, electromechanical, solid-state and microprocessor, pickup testing, timing at three points on the time dial curve, checking the operation of restraint, directional, and other protective elements. Using the front panel or computer connections to perform relay checks. Testing arc reduction technology in accordance with manufacturer instructions. These maintenance practices are critical because they directly impact the accuracy of arc flash risk assessment. If a protective device is not properly lubricated or mechanically functioning, operating time can be delayed. This leads to higher incident energy levels than originally calculated in the analysis and can potentially put downstream workers and equipment at risk. In the 2023 NFPA 70B standard, language was added to allow continuous monitoring and predictive techniques to drive maintenance intervals compared to the tables provided. For example, Modern advancements in intelligent trip units are revolutionizing the ability to monitor overall circuit breaker health. These units dramatically streamline traditional breaker inspection procedures with an at-a-glance health indicator and powerful data analytics that detail the condition of the breaker for easy predictive maintenance and enhancing system reliability, utilizing detailed reports on operations, short circuits, overloads, temperature, and more. Similar capabilities can now also be found in modern transfer switch controllers. Many of these devices can perform remote load testing, time-stamped event summaries, and high-speed event waveform captures with detailed event logging to simplify preventive maintenance. Additionally, there are add-on devices you can implement to provide continuous, non-invasive online monitoring for generators, motors, switchgear, unit substation dry-type transformers, bus duct, and cable connections. These devices provide constant tracking of partial discharge activity and predictive monitoring to help users to make better safety and maintenance decisions. In conclusion, the 2023 NFPA 70B standard is a step forward for electrical worker safety. As stated in the NFPA 70E, electrical worker safety relies on properly maintained overcurrent protective devices and electrical equipment. Equipment that has not been properly maintained has a higher chance of failure, increasing incident energy, which could result in increased damage to property and jeopardize electrical worker safety. 